The Geneva Motor Show is a big deal. It's the first major European show on the calendar each year. So we always expect to see a healthy turnout of new and interesting production cars and concepts. That said, 2018 is shaping up to be a banner year. Even by Geneva standards, we've got plenty of boots on the ground in Switzerland to cover all of the hot Geneva news. And we'll be updating this page regularly. The folks at Aston Martin surprised us all and debuted the Valkyrie AMR Pro. An ultra-hot track-only version of the already monkey balls cruzitone Bananapins Valkyrie hypercar. The AMR Pro has a power-to-weight ratio of better than 1-1 is limited to just 25 cars. And the example on the show floor is a retina searing yellow-green color. We love everything about it except that all 25 have been sold. Finally, Aston Martin is spinning off its Legenda nameplate into a separate zero-emissions brand starting with the super swoopy Legend Division concept. Production of the world's first zero-emission luxury brand is supposed to kick off in 2021 and will surely get old Uncle Elon's knickers in a twist when it hits the market. The big news from Ingolstadt comes in the form of the company's new A6 mid-size sedan. The A6 is being built on a new platform, offering weight savings and improved handling over the outgoing model. Word around the schoolyard is that Audi may have some some production electrified e-tron models on hand for selective drives off-site. And it even snuck one into its booth. Audi also teamed up with aircraft manufacturer Airbus to show off a quasi-plausible flying car concept involving a small electric city car and a giant helicopter drone that can latch onto it and pick it up. The full-scale models that Audi had in its booth were epic and this represents the first kind of flying car future we can really get behind. Bentley is debuting expanded powertrain choices for its hottest seller, the Bentayga, at Geneva this year. We are expecting to see the hybrid electric variant that packs a 3.0-liter V6 and an electric motor that join forces to produce 462 horsepower. The new Bentayga V8 will also be on display. The big star at BMW's booth is the new concept M8 Grand Coupe. It's aggressive looking. In fact it looks like someone kicked sand in an M6 Grand Coupe's face at the beach so it went home and started eating Wheaties laced with steroids. The Bavarians are light on details when it comes to performance, though they emphasize that there will be a lot of it. We are expecting the production Z4 convertible to make its appearance. We are also expecting to finally lay eyes on the next generation BMW Z4 at the show this year. This car is part of an agreement between the Bavarian brand and Toyota to co-develop sports cars. You'll see it on the Toyota stand as some sort of super-shaped wonder. The Z4 is most likely to come with a standard array of BMW powertrain options in four and six cylinder flavors. And we're also expecting the car to have a cloth top instead of the current Z's folding hardtop. We also know that the X4 will be making its debut in Geneva, adding to BMW's lineup of sport utility coupes. Never a company that felt comfortable being in second place, Ferrari is bringing its roided up 488 Pista to Geneva with all of its scoops and vents and carbon fiber. The Pista packs Ferrari's most powerful V8 to date with 710 horsepower on tap. It will also be the most technologically advanced special production Ferrari model ever, putting even the delightful 458 specially to shame. Hyundai is really sharpening its knives on the design front with its sights set on the Europeans and Mazda with its new Le Fil Rouge concept. The fleet coupe will point the way forward for upcoming Hyundai designs and we're glad for that. This thing is handsome. Beyond Le Fil Rouge, Hyundai has a lot going on at Geneva this year with the debut of its all-new Santa Fe crossover, which packs a surprisingly aggressive design with some new powertrain options including a diesel and a hybrid. The Hyundai Nexo fuel cell vehicle that we drove to see us earlier this year makes its European debut here as well. We've also seen the battery electric version of Hyundai's new Kona crossover. The electric Kona will supposedly do 300 miles on a single charge. But we don't know how that figure was calculated. We do know, however depressingly, that we won't be getting the EV version in the US. Jaguar has given the production version of the fully electric I-Pace crossover that debuted in concept form at the LA Auto Show in 2016. We've got high expectations for Jag's first EV, but after a short autocross on a wet, cold parking lot, things are looking really good. Especially since it will be packing more than 400 horsepower and should be able to go about 220 miles between recharges. The best news is pricing. In the US, it will start at $69,500. 
which will undercut the Tesla Model X by around $10,000. The new seat benefits from a platform change and more pleasing shape metal. Kia gave its European designed and manufactured seat knee seat with an apostrophe for some reason a world debut at Geneva. The seat is huge for the company and makes up a sizable chunk of its sales outside the US. It now gets upgraded in cabin tech. More powertrain options including a new diesel and some pretty decent looks for a Euro Econo car. The fine folks at Santiagata have been so kind as to give the Huracan Spider the ludicrously good Performante treatment and the results are fairly stunning. The Performante loses 77 pounds over its standard Spider sibling. But as the same 5.2-liter naturally aspirated V10 putting out 640 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque as its roofed relative. All the other trick active aero bits are here too, so now people can see your face doing that total recall thing as you whip the Performante Spider around corners with the roof down. Also of note is that Lamborghini has committed to only building an electric car if it meets very specific criteria, a full. Electric Lamborghini must be able to do a speed greater than 300 kph 186 miles per hour and be able to make three laps full speed. At the Nordsch Leaf, if you have a technology that is able to do this, it is welcome at Lamborghini, said Maurizio Reggiani. Lamborghini's Director of Research and Development, we are getting a new three-door flagship SUV from Land Rover in the form of the Range Rover Coupe SV and Apart from a top-down interior shot, this will be the first time we've seen the new SUV. Land Rover has said that it will have a limited production run and that it will be the spendiest thing in its lineup at just shy of $300,000. If you just spat out your coffee reading that number, you're probably not alone. That said, the money is clearly going toward the interior, which has new fancier, more comfortable seats and enough rare and exotic wood to make the whole cast of Fiorguli gnash their teeth and weep. Outside, all the body panels except the hood and the lower tailgate are new and the badges are handmade natch. Less frightening than the concept, the production UX still challenges our sensibilities. Lexus has rolled out its new crossover. The UX, the Lexus UX is based on a concept we saw at Paris in 2016 and shares Toyota's TNGA platform on which everything from the Prius to the new Avalon is built. As we expected, Lexus is offering a direct injected gasoline engine and a hybrid variant, both of which go on sale in the U.S. in December of this year. Mazda decided to show off the refreshed version of its Mazda 6 tourist station wagon. It's beautiful, we want it, but it's not coming to America. We should also mention that it can be had with either gasoline or diesel engines and manual transmissions. We've got a lot of feelings about this, as you can probably tell, the folks from working will bring McLaren's new technological terror, the Senna, to Geneva this year, despite the fact that the entire 500 vehicle production run has been sold. Also, just in case the Senna wasn't fast enough or exclusive enough or even expensive enough, McLaren is also offering the Senna MSO Carbon and just in case that still wasn't wasn't enough to whet the appetites of the masses. The MACA folks trotted out the Santa GTR. The GTR is for the racetrack only and produces around 2,200 pounds of downforce. Thanks to its zany aero bits, the turbocharged 4.0-liter V8 gets reworked to for an additional 25 horsepower. Not that it needed it. Oh, and if your only guard friends decide that they want one, McLaren is making just 75 of them. Mercedes is pulling out all the stops this year by debuting a whole bunch of new models, most of which are awesome. The AMG GT Coupe, which has four doors, despite the Coupe designation, is a slightly more grown-up take on the CLS AMG models of years past. It can be had with a bevy of engines from the new Turbo Straight 6 to the lovely twin Turbo 4.0-liter V8 that lives in the new G-Class. Among other things, we're also excited to feast our peepers on the first AMG version of the hot new G-Class that debuted in Detroit in January. The new G63 will have AMG's now ubiquitous twin-turbo V8 that will, in this trim, produce 577 horsepower and be bolted to a 9-speed automatic transmission. The bread-and-butter C-Class is getting a facelift and the C43 version gets a mild 23-horsepower bump along with a bigger common screen. No mocks for you, C-Class. We're also looking forward to a new Maybach S-Class that once again looks more like its own sub-brand and not just an S650 with extra badges. Lastly, we get to see the production version of the new A-Class, which we'll be getting as a sedan. No cool hatch for us, for the first time ever in the US of A.
It's set to slot in below the CLA class which means a hopefully sub-$30,000 price tag for us millennial Americans. In the US we often find ourselves wondering who exactly buys Mitsubishis but it turns out that Europeans are buying the hell out of them. Especially the Outlander Fluff Mitsubishi is updating that model for 2019 with an Atkinson cycle engine for more efficiency. A bigger battery for more EV range and a generally nicer interior. It's not a total game changer or groundbreaking in any way. The don't mess with success, right? Polestar gave the public its first look at the gorgeous. Closer to production Polestar 1 Coupe which will bring the heat to even the coldest Swedish winters. Thanks to a combined gasoline and electric output of 600 horsepower, it's as pretty in person as we'd hoped since we saw the photos. Porsche is ready to show off its newly refreshed 911 GT3 RS which, frankly, looks a lot like the previous version. But it's underneath where all the magic has been conjured. The new car somehow manages to have even less rubber in the suspension. Which will no doubt make for a seriously precise handling car plus it's got a naturally aspirated flat 6 putting out in excess of 500 horsepower. There is literally nothing to not like about it. Porsche also decided to throw caution to the wind and debut a super sexy, lifted, off-roady version of its Mission E electric vehicle called the Cross Tour Snow. In terms of form factor, think of a better-looking Panamera mixed with a Volvo V90 Cross Country and a splash of Audi All Road 4 flavor. Fast wagons forever. And lastly, throwing all German restraint to the wind. Porsche exec Detlev von Platten has told Roadshow that it will make and sell a flying sports car as part of its strategy 2025 plan. Sounds crazy, right? Yeah, it totally baked our noodles too. But then we had a couple drinks at the hotel bar and the GT3 RS with all the powers of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang started sounding pretty good. The Croatian wizards behind the world's gnarliest electric hypercar and Richard Hammond's personal nemesis have gone and done it again with the Remex C2. With almost 2,000 electric horsepower on tap and some mad decent looks, you'd expect it to just be vaporware, but you'd be wrong. This thing is legit and it both terrifies and titillates us. We'll probably just have Henry Cathpole drive it. He'll drive anything. The name is changing, but not much else. The Smart 42 electric drive is getting renamed the Smarty Q42. Which makes sense, because in the near future all of the smart cars sold in the US will be electric. This change also ties it to parent company Mercedes-Benz's EQ subbrand for electric cars. Subaru brought out its latest concept, the Visiv Tourer, which to us looks like either the new WRX wagon that people have been clamoring for since the old one went away, or the world's most aggressive outback. Either way, it's a handsome car and we're into it. Subaru has told us that the production version of this concept will pack a whole heap of driver assistance technologies and will debut in 2020. Well, we definitely didn't get the almost ready for production Supra of our dreams. But a racing prototype version called the GR Racing Concept is a decent consolation prize. This beauty is pretty close aesthetically to the FT1 concept we saw a while ago, which is a good thing, being a racing concept. It's got all kinds of aero trickery and lightweight materials inside and out, it's damn cool. But Toyota needs to quit playing with our emotions and make with the Supra already. Volkswagen will be bringing its version of a Tesla Model S competitor in the form of the ID. Vision concept, this sedan is relatively low powered with an emphasis on range rather than neck snapping performance. It is also interesting because of its lack of driver input, meaning this could be where we get VW's vision of autonomy as well. Geneva marked the public debut of the Swedish brand's new V60 wagon, slotting in just beneath the gorgeous V90 wagon. The V60 loses little of its big brother's looks in its transition to the middle of the market, and will be offered with a borderline silly T8 plug-in hybrid drivetrain that offers 386 horsepower and one metric boatload of torque. We saw this baby in Sweden recently and its aces, its all design will be debuting the Roadster version of its BMW i8 based Siruna supercar. Geneva is also known for its oddball cars and this year is looking like no exception. We saw the Siruna Roadster from its all design and a four-door EV from Jujiaro. Rinspeed showed off its snap concept, which we covered at CES in January. Goodyear is also providing a strong showing in the oddball category this year with its oxygen concept tires. Tires? Oddball? Yeah, so this concept is filled with living moss that draws carbon dioxide and moisture in and expels oxygen. 
It also generates its own electricity to run sensors and LEDs by hacking photosynthesis. Weird. Right? Goodyear estimates that if all the tires in Paris were replaced with oxygen, it would pull around 4,500 tons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and put out around a ton of oxygen. The Pelvi Liberty flying car Autogiro thing surprised the heck out of us by being a real thing. It's weird but kind of cool though it's $600,000 price tag could buy you your own private military's worth of old Cessnas and Miatas. It'll do 60 miles per hour on the road and max out at a little over 110 miles per hour in the sky. It's still waiting on FAA certification so it might be a while before we see one packed full of Silicon Valley programmers. But that's fine.